Hey guys, so I've remade a dungeon from Court of the Dragon Queen in Dungeon Drum and I thought maybe it would be a good idea to show you a mini tutorial on how I use Dungeon Draft to make maps for Foundry. And so again, this is a trace of a map from a module. I need to specify that this is not a direct tutorial. If you're looking for how to use Dungeon Draft or how to use Foundry, I will tell you right now, I used Encounter Library. They have a beautiful collection of video tutorials on how to use these two things and how to import your map into Foundry and all of the, that good stuff and I highly recommend going there if you want a actual tutorial. But I did want to show off Dungeon Draft a little bit because it is a tool that I use constantly. So the first thing you're going to want to do is set up your map. So you're going to want to hit the new button, select your dimensions. Now I've already done this, counted out the squares on the map. The map that we're tracing, each square is actually 10 foot, so I've kind of adjusted it a little bit because of that. Then you're gonna wanna go to your map settings and hit trace. From there, you're gonna wanna select the map that you want to trace. I'll add that to the screen. Then you're gonna go ahead and you're going to kind of zoom in and scale it. Now it doesn't matter if the grid lines up or not because I'll be adding a grid in Foundry later. Fill up this area as much as I can. You can see on the left here that you can actually change the scale without using the scroll wheel. I like where the opacity is at so I'm just going to leave it there. Now because this dungeon is actually a series of caves, we're actually going to use the cave brush. We'll select the cave brush and then we will add our colors. I did change this around a little bit. Once we do that, you can adjust your brush size. We're just gonna go ahead and start drawing out the cave. Another thing I like to do is to kind of check back and forth between the map and what I've drawn is adjust the opacity level on that traced image so that I can kind of compare and contrast. Next, we'll be adding water to our caves. As you can see, the middle section is completely full of water. I'm gonna go ahead and select my colors, my brush size, and just go ahead and color all of that in. Next, we're gonna wanna add the staircase. Dungeon Draft has this really cool feature where you can set up a path. And in those paths, they have actual staircases. So we're gonna go ahead and put those in here. So I'll go ahead and I'll draw those in where I see them. I will have to adjust the size a little bit. I do change the width. You can change the smoothness, which would change how it kind of blends in with the background, but we're not gonna need to do that. You can also do this with the cliffs. In room nine, there is a cliff edge that I already drew in here because I skipped forward a little bit. Remember that you can adjust the width. So in this one section in room three, where it gets a little wider, I'll make the staircase a little wider. Something I should add is that if at any time that you're making a path, you mess up. If you hit the backspace key, and this applies for the walls too, it'll delete the last point that you made. It took me forever to figure out that that's how you would erase something. I was literally putting walls down completely and then hitting delete on it, and that just took way too much time. Just hit the backspace button and it'll erase the last point that you put down. Next, I'm going to add numbers to each room. This is to honestly just make it easier for me while I'm going in and adding all the details for each room that are specified in the module.
Once I have all the numbers down, I'm gonna go ahead and read each section in the module, add the necessary things to that room. Lanterns are under the object section, so you can go there and just type in the word lanterns and you'll find it. The first room has more lanterns than the module says, but that is because I want that first room to be very lit up since the rest of the cave is just so dark. Something I should also mention, you can do lighting effects within Dungeon Draft and it'll transfer to Foundry, but I don't do that, mostly because I end up having to add lighting in specific rooms anyway, and it just makes it easier for me to do it in Foundry than in here. Editor Kylie here. I was going to go through and tell you about every single room in this dungeon, but as you can see, I go on for a super long time about it, and I wanted this video to be a lot shorter than it is. So instead of telling you what's in every single room, I'm just going to time lapse it. Uh, if you really want to know what's going on in these rooms, you can buy Horde of the Dragon Queen and read the module yourself. Okay. In room 9, there's this really complicated crane mechanism that lifts crates up and down off of a cliff. There's no such thing as a crane in Foundry. In my head, there's a wooden platform with something hanging over it to hold that platform up with a wooden bar that is held by another wooden structure. I create this crane with a wooden crate. I then take a chandelier, make it a little bit bigger so it's hovering around the crate. I took a wooden board as the crane neck and then I actually used the toilet, a wooden toilet, for the main base of the crane. And that's how I traced this mini map. If you're looking to create your own dungeon from scratch, I recommend watching this video where it'll teach you which five rooms you definitely need in your dungeon so that you can, uh, challenge your players. 